All right, Trump just held a rally in Pennsylvania, and you are about to witness the last breaths of a political provocateur's dying career, and it happens on stage. You know, let's jump right in with this clip of Donald Trump spewing out an absolute word salad about Kamala's interviews. Genuinely, let me know if you know what he's trying to say here. She had the other interview with the other guy who was a nice guy, I think, from Philadelphia, from Pennsylvania, and he was a nice guy who was asking her all these snow that they only take... They don't take like I do. Anybody who wants to go, go, what the hell difference does it make? They have, and how, how dishonest was ABC? It was three on- What is he talking about? Also, I feel like everybody in the crowd always looks incredibly bored. I've been to these rallies and they get super excited while waiting in line. And for the first five, 10 minutes of the speeches, they're always taking pictures, taking videos, taking selfies of them and the celebrity president. But then 20 minutes in, they're always so bored. And that is further proven by this clip right here. I mean, I'm just gonna zoom in on the people in the background. Look how bored they look while he's speaking. interview with the other guy who was a nice guy, I think from Philadelphia, from Pennsylvania. And he was a nice guy who was asking her all these snow that they only take they These guys aren't even looking. These people are over here whispering. I mean, nobody cares about what Donald Trump is saying. And as I said, these are the last breaths of his dying political career. We have a lot to break down in this video. And with 45 days to go until the election, we have no time to waste. So make sure you leave a like on the video. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. And in this next clip, Trump did a private fundraiser today and he was asked about crypto. And again, he gives a word salad, but this one is actually pretty dangerous because Trump has floated the idea of replacing our real stable economy with like Bitcoin. Just watch. I'm curious what you think the future of crypto looks like if God forbid you don't win the election. The future of crypto? What is crypto. It like? Well, I think it's a good future. You know, who knows about anything today? But I think it's a good future. I'll tell you what, you look at values, you look at what's happening and where it's come and where it came from. I think crypto's got a great future. I think Really well said. You look at values, you look at where it's come from and where it's, where it's going to go. It really does. Maybe we'll pay off the $35 trillion in crypto. He said, maybe we'll pay off the $35 trillion in crypto. Uh, I'll, write out, I'll write out a little piece of paper, $35 trillion in crypto. We have no debt. Right? Everyone's laughing like he's being tongue in cheek, but Trump genuinely started a new crypto business spearheaded by his two sons, Beavis and Butthat, and now he has a plan to turn America into the quote, crypto capital of the world. So he is using very precious campaign time with 50 days to go, 45 days to go, to promote this own business that his sons are intertwined with. In this clip, Trump is saying that the polls have to be fake. When they say we're three points up or four, there's no way. It's got to be a hell of a lot more than that. It has to be. It has to be. You know, polls are fake also, just like these people, the fake news. They just... The polls are fake. The news is fake. Every single institution around him is fake, including the FBI, the DOJ, the World Health Organization, whatever it is, it's all rigged. Our courts are rigged. Trump has successfully convinced millions of people in America not to believe anything unless it favors him, whether it's polling or whether it's our criminal justice system. And that is dangerous. I make this point on my show all the time, but think about how much it benefits people like Vladimir Putin, all of our enemies, when Americans don't even trust the institutions in the country that they live in. Americans don't want to vote because they think it's rigged. Americans think that Donald Trump is the only person they can look to. And Trump says everything is rigged. Today, he made a post on Truth Social, uh, just this deranged, long press statement, which number one, do you think any MAGA supporters are going to read all of this? Nobody has time to read all of this. I'm glad that happened to him, or I'm sorry this happened to him, but I'm not reading all of this. You can just see the buzzwords, the J6 committee, the zombie case, the lawless documents, Ukraine. Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. This man is whining. But my broader point is that today he made a post saying that we are interfering with the election, we as in Democrats, and that there is foreign interference. Now, this post was full of complete projection because Trump is the one who wanted to cheat in every sense of the word, subvert the will of the American people. MAGA folks are the ones who are taking money from Russia, and Trump continues to boost these MAGA votes. And Trump says that Democrats want to dilute the true vote, but he's the one that tried to convince Mike Pence into unilateral deciding the election. Let's go back to this clip of Trump saying that Zelensky is, quote, the greatest salesman in history. This is just disgusting rhetoric about, some, about our ally. 
But Ukraine now, I see Zelensky is here. I think Zelensky is the greatest salesman in history. Every time he comes into the country, he walks away with $60 billion. Billion! Walks in with $60 billion. He wants them to, he wants them to win this election so badly. But I would do differently. I will work out peace before I'm even before. As president-elect, if I win this election, the first thing I'm going to do is call up Zelensky and call up President Putin, and I'm going to say, you got to make a deal. This is crazy. You know, if Zelensky is the greatest salesman in history, then the only better salesman has to be Vladimir Putin, who has successfully conned a U.S. president, a former U.S. president, and half of the country into thinking that he is favorable to the U.S. If Zelensky has tricked the U.S., then what is that saying about how much Putin has conned Donald Trump and the people around him? Trump then says he will have a peace deal when he's still president-elect. There are two things that are wrong with that. Number one, he's saying that he has the leverage before he even gets into office to make a deal with foreign leaders. I don't even know if that's legal, but also he has multiple times implied that he has a direct secret line to Vladimir Putin. And then secondly, Trump's plan to make a peace deal is to cede Ukrainian land to Russia, and that is just kicking the can down the road. Russia's entire strategy is to start a war, pause that war when it serves their interests and reignite it down the road. They've done it time and time again. In 2008, in 2014, in 2022, they started a war. If Trump paused that war, Russia would just ignite it 10 years down the road. Here's Donald Trump maybe taking a swipe at J.D. Vance, talking about couches. I don't think so. We have to win Pennsylvania. Go out and make a plan to vote early, vote absentee, or vote in person on election day, but you gotta get out and vote. You gotta say to your husband, Harry, get the hell off that couch. Get off that couch. That's what they have to say to J.D. Vance when he gets a little bit too frisky. Here is Donald Trump raging on stage about Jimmy Kimmel, of all people. I mean, it looks like you have firefighters in the back. You have people who are here to hear about the future of America, and Trump rants about his celebrity vengeances. Just so unpresidential. And ABC is dying. He was the worst host in the history of the Academy Awards. Remember I did that? Remember I wrote a, a, I put a truth. Everybody should go to truth immediately. And by the way, we also love Elon, I have to tell you. Gave me a big endorsement, big one. But remember in the Academy Awards, I said how he's the worst host in the history of the Academy Awards. And this stupid guy goes up, and just before the best picture of the year, the show is almost over. They're waiting for the best picture of the year. He gets up and he says, and his wife said, please don't do it. Please, darling, don't go out. His manager said, don't do it. I have to do it. He goes out and reads my truth to the entire audience right before the best, prime time, the best picture. And it said, basically, he is the worst host of the history. He reads the whole thing. And then I think he said something like, ha, 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 he thinks he bothers me or some crap like that. I said, he's one of the dumbest human beings ever. He should have listened to his wife. What a dope, but absolutely insanely unhinged. If you enjoyed this video, all that asks is that you leave a like, comment a blue heart, hit that subscribe button, let's hit 600K before the election. A lot of times people think they're subscribed, but they're actually not. So double check real fast. Either way, have a great rest of your day and peace out.